where it's a mixing bowl, right? But yet we're still dealing with stuff that we dealt with in 2020. You know, police brutality. We're talking about this year, people running to the Capitol and sitting in the no, no, you know, Nova office doing the most ridiculous things I've ever seen in my life. That's not American pride, right? We're and talking it's about- excused. It's excuse. They make excuses for why they are allowed to go and terrorize because this is a terroristic threat, right? Yeah. If you think about any person that goes to a government building, you're supposed to be you're supposed to have the highest penalties put on you for defaming a government building. They took not only they did not only took things from the building, but they took paperwork and documents that are classified, classified documents when a black male can sell weed which is currently legalized in numerous states still have a criminal record but huh. the government made it legal but Come some on. I just talked about this today oh my god I'm gonna take right. you right. 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 Stuff. Yes. it doesn't make sense but it's the color of your skin and I'm gonna give you guys a, a, a tidbit like this is something that most people don't know about me my mother doesn't know her biological father but from the rumors in the family, my mother's biological father, which is my grandfather, is white. And so people look at me and they will never see any type of biracial nothing in me. They automatically see me as what? A black woman. But if a white person does something the same exact way I do it, it's consequences for me. Mm -hmm. How? These people are not getting penalized. They're, they're com complaining about not getting organic food in prison you broke the law <laughs> yeah you know and it's crazy because right about now everybody's getting paid off of these marijuana farms that they're creating out of cali some are starting it up in atlanta georgia and other parts of georgia i don't know if it's legal i'm sure it's legalized in new york but i'm not sure yet. I don't, new york, new york, Pennsylvania. and you have all these people that's about to really make some big bank and kudos to you guys but when you still have black people, brown people that are still locked up in prison or in jail the same crime. for 20 years for what we're out here trading stocks on, that's a whole entire problem. And if you can't see that, it's your your reality is huge. It's effed up. I want to cuss so bad. I just don't understand. Like, how do people and, not? And I get yeah. so enraged because people will never understand what it feels like for what we go through. Right. It is a true paradox. It is a true like, you know how you say that I always use this um this phrase. I feel like I'm living in the twilight zone because what's right is wrong and what's wrong is right. At least in our world, that's how it comes off, especially when you're talking about you're dealing with uh, upper echelon people of other races that are not black. I mean, they really don't treat us fairly at all, whether you're male or female, whether you have the same amount of money as them or not. It's almost like they have been trained and thought and prepared to believe in their minds that we are not the same and we are on a lower threshold than they are. Yeah. And that's just, that blows my mind. It blows my mind when, as like Frank mentioned to us on the last segment he did on, uh, on the King's Edition, how you explain a lot of people that came from Africa were scientists, were, were people that were chemists, you know, they were biologists, they were astronomers. You know, they were all these great things. And doesn't it show America when you really do your research and find out who created all the everyday luxuries, you know, like the the the, the street light? Every mm -hmm. every country in this world can't say they have street lights. Look at India. They drive crazy as all get out because they don't have street lights over there. You know, you think about the hairbrush. Where would you be without the hairbrush? What? You know about Garrett Morgan created the perm. It's not just black women that wear perms. White women wear them too. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Where would we be without the GPS system? There's a black lady by the name of Gladys May West. Oh my goodness. Okay, that 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 actually calculated the coordinates of the entire earth. She was a black scientist. And let me say this too: that lady is still living. I think she lives down in Florida or Virginia. This lady actually invented the GPS system. Black lady, Gladys May West. How many people know about her or how you know she doesn't, she's not even spoke about. No. Okay, so each time when you get in your car and you hit that GPS, just know that your black sister, okay, she yes. invented this. Yeah, she's a mathematician, right? You know, 
And whatever and whatever white America has always made illegal for us, they always came back and made legal for themselves. Yep. Let me say this too. A couple of things I'm gonna throw out there. Like you mentioned marijuana. They listen, they couldn't, the state of California couldn't lock up. It, it look, it wasn't enough jails to hold people that was going around selling and smoking weed. So they had to legalize it. That's the back draw to that right there. A lot of people don't know. And that's the reason why they legalized it. It was a whole bunch of Mexicans and a bunch of Negroes out in Compton selling weed out in out in Las Vegas, okay, in Nevada. That was one of the first states to legalize it because mm -hmm. it wasn't enough prison systems to hold everyone. So they said, listen, Okay, we're gonna legalize this, but we're gonna tax the hell out of y'all mm -hmm. okay, for, for making okay we distilleries. Okay, so anything that the government, if if they don't and if they can't control it, okay, they're either gonna lock you up or they're gonna seize it and they're gonna start taxing and they're gonna make money off of it. So all of a sudden now, like uh, Asia said, you've been look, Negroes been getting locked up for marijuana for years. Yes. So all of a sudden now you're gonna legalize it. Because now you can tax the hell out of everybody, so now the federal government is getting a kickback. Yep. Look at look, look at moonshine. Look at uh, moonshine. Right, moonshine that was okay. exactly slavery. So now all of a sudden, now okay, it's being sold in the damn liquor stores. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whatever is illegal for us, okay, is always legal for them. Oxycodone pills. If if Junebug get caught in his house. Okay, with 12 oxycodone pills and yep. he doesn't have a prescription, guess what's gonna happen? He's gonna go to jail. get locked up. Okay, but why the hell can you go to the pharmacy, okay, with a prescription, okay, and you can get as much oxycodone as you want? Illegal for us, mm -hmm. legal for them. You there you go. <laughs> they just write it up as a prescriptive medication that can help you. Okay, the same as morphine. Morphine been killing our people since the time. Of the Vietnam War, okay. So why all of a sudden now you can go to a rehab center? People get locked up for heroin, for heroin yeah. charges. Morphine is just a downgraded version of heroin. So look at all the rehab centers that use the illegal substance yes. of morphine to wean people off. So why aren't they getting arrested? <laughs> An Italian guy, an Italian guy named Pablo Escobar. He can he can loan me twenty thousand dollars, okay, and say, hey, listen, I give you twenty thousand today. You give me twenty twenty five thousand tomorrow. They'll go and lock him up, okay, because they call it what illegal yeah. loan sharking. Mm -hmm. You got to go to a bank, a government controlled facility, for that same twenty thousand dollars. They can say, look, they can charge you the same. $5,000 interest. Mm -hmm. But how did Pablo Estevez get locked up and the damn bank people don't? You know why? Mm -hmm. By the federal government. And like I said before, whatever they can't control, they're going to lock you up. They're going to seize it and lock you up. And they're going to call it illegal. But excuse me, Danny. And excuse me. Uh, 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 excuse me, Asia. <laughs> I'm going right to the bank and I'm doing the same transaction. What's the difference in that? Come on, you know the difference. One's legal, one's not illegal. Why is that? Uh, the controlled. color of our skin, period. Right. It's controlled by the government. Whatever the government, whatever they can't control, they always seize and they always tax. And hold you on, know. before you get too deep, I just want to show everybody who uh, Miss Gladys West is. Wow. And, yes. And uh, it's important for people to know who she is. And, uh, you know, we want to give people their flowers while they're Absolutely. here. Absolutely. You, you know, and, and, and you know, we don't want her to end up like Miss Catherine um, on, with NASA. You know what I'm saying? Like, I even mentioned her in my book. It's like she received her award in like 101 or 100 years old, something like that. Some people don't even live to see that. Right. So thank God she lived long enough to get her award. But Jesus, why did it take so long? She right. actually, she calculates, she's a mathematician as well, or was. You know, calculated the trajectory to get a human being in orbit around Earth and around the later on Bingo. around the moon too. Bingo. So it's just like you, <laughs> it just blows my mind how people can't see that we are equal, if not more so, because we're the we're the mechanism the behind this country. Exactly, we are the engine. You know, we're so, we, you know, and, and kudos to everybody else that's doing their thing too. This is not to discredit other cultures, by the way. We're talking about our culture right now. 
because we need to be educated about who we are. It seems to me that everybody else knows who we are except for us. Mm -hmm. And that is the problem. Yeah. I'm done talking now. And, you know, I think it's very important for us to acknowledge that it's a lot of people that are trying to get on the Black Lives Matter movement. A lot of companies trying to go on the Black Lives Matter movement and they're trying to be uh, socially just per se. Uh, what, I, what, I, what the statement I'm about to say, please do not misstrew and take it wrong. But what I'm about to say is I am tired of seeing the first of black women being CEOs of companies in 2020 and 2021 because this should have been happening years ago. We should not just be first. We should have been, because we've been running these companies for centuries. We've been doing a lot of things for centuries. And now people, companies are trying to be socially just. And so they want to say, oh, you know what? This is the first black woman of this company as the CEO. Thank you. I'm so happy for her. I'm so, so excited for her. But at the end of the day, this should not be acceptable. It shouldn't be. I agree. And and, and 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 let me say something else also. You let me say something, uh Asia. You you're absolutely correct in everything you said. And and what I what what always confuses me is that why does white America always feel that they're doing us a favor? Right. You know, like they're right. doing us a favor. Like by, <laughs> right, they're doing us a favor by putting us in certain positions or they giving us a handout when it comes to certain things as far as finance or economics. Um, it, look, of course, everybody knows the aboriginaries of this country was here way before Columbus. Yes. Okay, so Talk like about I, that. <laughs> right. So like I explained, listen, right. Look, Mount Rushmore. Let me hit y'all with another fact. Mount Rushmore that you see over there in, um, in uh, what is that, Dakota? Over there in, in Dakota. Let me say this, right? Mount Rushmore in the beginning, before you had Theodore Roosevelt, um, um, uh, uh, Washington, um, and you had Lincoln, and it's another one, Teddy Roosevelt, before you had their faces carved up there on that mountain, which is now called Mount Rushmore, that place was called the Black Hills, and it, called, it right. belonged to the Lakota Indians. That's wow. right. Okay, now, Ulysses Grant, just a little bit for you. Ulysses Grant, S. Grant, he was the one who, who told the uh, army to go and seize that place because that's where the Lakota Indians hid gold at, okay, that their forefathers had. And they seized it, and afterwards, it was also the reason why it was carved, that the presidents was carved up there because that was funded by the KKK. But to bring uh -huh. your attention back to that, okay, it was literally, it was a mountain called the Black Hills Mountains that was yep. that was actually belonged to the Lakota Indians. And so That's they right. found out that it was a bunch of gold there. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Ulysses Grant actually seized it. Okay. And he put borders around it. Nobody else can come here and he stole it. And matter of fact, he was rewarding every U.S. soldier, I think $500, $300 or $500 if you killed any North American Indian that came near that place. Those are historical facts. Those are historical facts. So my thing is this. Why does white America always feel that they're actually giving us something when this damn place belongs to us any damn way? How the hell can they go back home? How the hell can they say go back home when they don't belong here in the first damn place? Home. This place more so exactly. brothers and sisters of North American Indians. We look, this is our home. To be honest with you, this is our damn home. Okay. So exactly. I, oh, I agree. I agree, especially when uh you know 45 was saying build a wall, keep them out. I'm like, wait a minute, keep them out. <laughs> you do <laughs> it's you the same place. <laughs> and you know what really tripped me out most of all about all of this is when he first got in, I had people that were of Latin descent. I said, how do you feel about this? How do you feel about them building a wall and your grandmother is still living in XYZ location? They were like, oh, no, it's fine. Build it. Right, right, right. Why is that? Why want to satisfy Why and pacify? That? Too many people want to satisfy and pacify people who are not people of color. We need what? to stop. No, 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 you're not hearing what I'm saying. You're not hearing what I'm saying. There were people of Latin descent who still had family members in these places that would no longer be able to come because the wall is being built, because there are so many harsh restrictions on immigration, immigrants, I'm sorry, and, and foreign people. How is it that you're in alignment with that? 
when you have your closest relatives. It's a delusion. You know, Exactly, but I'm trying to understand where they're coming from. I want to, I want to see what Frank will say about this. This is I don't know. my mind. They, they delusional. Sorry. What are you talking about? The Mexicans that they're keeping out? What they, what they tried to remember in the very beginning, it was this big uproar. Like, oh yeah, we're gonna build this wall. We're gonna make America great again. And what I'm saying is, the people that were of Latin descent there have, have now gotten their green card. They're working in corporate America. They're saying that, oh yeah, it's fine. Build the wall. But they still have their mom there in another in Mexico. They still have their grandparents. They still have their little brothers and little sisters there. But they're okay with leaving them over there. Right. And we just be merry over here on this side of the wall. They were right. they were fine right. with never seeing them again. That's why right. I'm going with that. Right. Well, one thing, well, one thing I can say, one thing I can say is this is that um when you go outside of the um of the tourist areas over there in Mexico, you know, outside of Cancun. Uh, when you go to Tijuana, a place like that, oh my goodness, the living conditions are deplorable yeah, over there. Horrible. Um, I wouldn't me 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 personally. I wouldn't. I, you know, you you couldn't pay me enough money to live over there. The jail systems, you know, yeah. they, they hardly have any water over there. So what Donald Trump was doing, and you have a lot of drug activity that funnels in and out of there, in and out of there, in and out of there, illegal drug activity. So, you know, you have of course America which a lot of people don't understand that the CIA, the FBI, you know, those guys are heavy drug traffickers. They're the ones who allow and let the drug dealers, you know, in the borders and from the water. And, you know, they're the ones who either let you in or they keep you out. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for years, for centuries, the Mexicans, okay, they were coming over here and they were drug trading through tunnels, okay, over here to the United States and working at a cheaper rate okay um you know then the people over here in america and that kind of pissed off you know uh, uh white americans especially the liberals that pissed them off you know so their main thing is that you know keep them out keep them out we don't want them over here you know it's nothing mm -hmm. wrong with, with all hard work and coming over here you know we make 15 dollars an hour and now they want three dollars an hour to do the same job so hey listen you had oh you had some farmers you know with three teeth in their damn mouth the meth addicts Somewhere in West Virginia. I don't mean to laugh, but I'm just saying. What's yeah. the name of that movie where Denzel Washington actually his character spoke to that? He said, Well, how the hell you think heroin got here? What was the name of that movie? I can't remember the name of that movie. Well, a, it, it, yeah. American Gangster. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that goes, and look, that goes, look, that that goes back to the Vietnam War. Okay, when the heroin acted, when the heroin act, when all of that came about. You know, because um, like I always say, the Vietnam War, that was the beginning of the end for the black community, because before that, you know, we didn't need white America. After slavery, the emancipation was signed. You know, believe it or not, that was the height of black riches during the time of segregation. And and, and I'm sorry. And excuse me for saying this. You know, um, I'm not sorry for saying it, but hey, a lot of people don't understand when we were by ourselves. OK, we were better. Off, better. OK, I'll put that. I'll put any any amount of money up to that any day. We had our own communities. We had our own banks. We had our own schools. We had our own hospitals. We had our own church systems. We had everything. We had our own traveling. We had everything that we needed, okay? The March for Civil Rights, okay, that was a smoke screen, like I always tell people, for us to what? To us to march right and let the so-called white people march right into our damn neighborhoods and destroy every damn thing. How do we, why, why would we need, okay, a debit credit system? And why would we need, a banking system where we had our own banks. We was right. our own people money. What the hell we exactly. need for to come in and you know the, the the marriage black marriages okay was at an all time low. Drug use was at an all time high. Okay, during the time of integration, all of that was during the time of integration. Before that, it wasn't. Okay, mm -hmm. pedophilia. Okay, all of a sudden became at an all time high. Okay, now you got kids that don't know whether or not they want to be a damn boy or they want to be a girl. We was we didn't have that. Okay, during the time, okay, of integration. Okay. And a lot of times people, it's it's a sad, it's a sad reality that a lot of our people don't want to accept that. Okay. And they yeah. say, Well, you know, what about Tommy down the street? What the hell? What about damn Tommy? Okay, what about Tommy? Look, let me say this, right? And and I'm gonna make myself very, very clear. People don't understand is that you know it's okay, okay, it's all right. During the time of Adolf Hitler, when he was talking about, okay, well, you know, the Germans and the Nazis, we're going to stay over here and let them stay, and we're going to let those people stay over there. It's okay if they want to stay over there across the street. That's okay. 
That's fine. Okay. If look, how many black people, okay, has been ostracized, okay, and have run into some kind of traffic or some kind of turbulence? When they always want to move into a, bl a white community, they get scrawled on the side of their house. Oh, yeah, I have like plenty that. of times I've had issues with that myself. Right, exactly. Exactly. And and, and me personally, I'm going to tell you, I, look, I'm, it's a sad reality. I'm going to tell you like this. Okay, a lot of times people don't, a lot of times people don't understand, a lot of times people don't understand that let us figure everything out at home amongst each other. Is better that way, other than bringing other people in. A, a, a white teacher by the name of Miss Robenstein can't tell my kids a damn thing about slavery. I don't care if you went to school for it. I don't care how many degrees you have for it. I don't care if you looked at Roots Part One, Part Three, Part Six. Okay, you can't tell my kids a damn thing when you showing lynchings and hangings. Okay, up on the screen. Okay, and you got a Caucasian woman explaining that. That's not going to go too well. With Just people. pause right quick. All that's wrong. Like, can't people that are listening to this show think about what Frank just said? That's an oxymoron, right? That is an oxymoron. Think about, it. and that's and that's the thing, right? We we were living unconsciously for so long, and I think now we're finally starting. To, some of us, anyway, are starting to finally tap in to actually seeing what what it is, what's really going on here. I think we're all been just like we've been we've been trained obviously and conditioned to think a certain way, and then our parents, grandparents, and so forth have sugarcoated reality for us. But I think this generation moving forward sees things for what it really is, and that's important to understand what Frank just said. He just said, and I'm gonna echo that that you have a teacher that is not black teaching the African American history. Showing your your kids men being burned, lynched, all kinds of horrendous things that personally I believe children shouldn't even see to begin with. Her forefather was doing that. The, so the school system they basically have a curriculum that was from the Constitution. <laughs> like they created their curriculum based off of the Constitution, based off of the, there you have it, <laughs> based on. And they're still running it that way. And Bingo. so when a black woman as myself come into the schools and I advocate for black and brown students, they say to me, well, what about socioeconomics? It doesn't make sense. What, why are you only, well, you know what? Because it's something called equity. And equity means we're going to give more. It's like a reparation, but it's a different type of reparation. So we're going to give more to the, the, the group of people, which are black and brown students who have suffered more because of the color of the skin. In school, you cannot see if a student is poorer than another student. Most schools have, um, what is it, uniforms? So yeah. you can tell, but not only that, but they need to stop with this social, like you said, Danny, the social economics compared to black people, brown people and how we're being treated. It's, it's despicable to me. Right. Yeah. I got a question. Why, what, why are they still teaching? Why are they still teaching about George Washington and Abraham Lincoln? And um, why are they still teaching about George Washington and, 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 and uh, Thomas Jefferson uh, to your kids in school? When George Washington, everybody knows, had over 300 slaves, right. you know, right. Thomas Jefferson had over 650 slaves, you know. So the reason why they teach this stuff to your kids is to really systematically and unconsciously get in your kid's mind. OK, exactly. is that they're the same, you know, as far as like just white supremacy. And I'm going to put it out there. That's what it is. You know what I'm saying? If, if look, if the school curriculums know that George Washington was known to have slaves, Thomas Jefferson, why in the hell do you still teach that? How do you, why do you teach the, the, the young black kids, the young black kids in America to stand up and salute the flag and I pledge allegiance oh, to Oh, no, the, I teach my kids not to. When the <laughs> same flag that they're pledging to is the same, you know, a country that had your forefathers Listen, in slavery. So I am the mother who went into my daughter's elementary first grade teacher's class, pulled the teacher out because she wasn't black like me. I pulled it to the side because I didn't want to embarrass her. Oh, I said, why are you teaching my child that Christopher Columbus discovered America? You cannot discover a place where people already inhabited. I said, we're adults, right? They didn't so lock you up. 
No, nah, but they looked at me like I was crazy. And that conversation, they moved me from the general area to the principal's office. They have it behind closed doors. And I was just as loud as I was outside of the door right. because I want you guys to understand something. We're not idiots. So stop right. it. The curriculum, right. these school districts need to change their curriculums. And you guys need to start telling the truth, period. We're right. sick of this. Parents right. like me, like Asia. Frank, you are a great historian. I think you need to be one of the teachers that starts a whole yes, entire absolutely. movement. You have your own school. That needs to multiply. Because yes. nobody can teach us our history better than we can. Exactly. And that's the honest truth. You know listen, what I'm saying? It's the American way. It's the, listen, it's the yeah. American way. And let me say this too, right? The reason why, again, the reason why the Constitution and the immigration laws are written, we were written, we wasn't, we weren't written in those laws. Nope. We weren't written in those laws. I don't understand what it takes for a black person to understand that we weren't written. When they talk about the American dream, Negroes weren't included in that. Well, listen, let me say this. When they wrote when they wrote the immigration laws and when they said when the immigrants can come over here and they gave them 163 acres of land and 600. We wasn't written in that. We were still slaves during that time. We wasn't part of that. The American dream, that concept and that and that idiom came from Europeans coming over here to America seeking the American dream. So now in 2021, okay, you got Negroes that may, you know, make a little bit of money and now they're talking about, oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm seeking the American dream and, you know, this, that, that wasn't for you. They had 400 years, had, you know, before us, way back when the immigration laws were written, they had a big jump start on us a long time ago oh, yes. the American dream. We still haven't got our 40 acres in a mule yet. I don't want our 40 acres. Do you hear me? Because that's worth a lot right now. I want all, listen, Kamala Harris, if you ever watch this show, I Please. want my 40 acres. I'm only Please. talking to you, Kamala, not Biden. Biden, you don't understand. But Kamala, you I know I, I want all of them. I want right. all of them. And, and you know, you know, in, in regards to that point, um, if you think about it, we have we don't most of us don't have generational wealth. Um, I'm learning generational wealth now, and I'm teaching myself and my I'm teaching my children and any person in my atmosphere. But if you think about, say, Bank of America or a bank, Ooh. let's just say a bank. Um, they automatically were rolling over from generation to generation. Ooh. They started their companies Man. off insurance policies. So they you were something I was just about to bring out. Wow. You know something I was just about to bring out. Man. <laughs> they take money from insurance policies and start businesses from Ooh. generation to generation to generation. Now we have black people, brown people who are starting to climb the corporate ladder or investing in their businesses. And now they're in a different tax bracket, right? So if I'm making over six figures and I'm in a tax bracket with everybody else that's making over six figures, but I don't have generational wealth. Right. So how is that equal? Because they have this generational wealth from years and years and years passed down from generation to generation. They had a house that they lived in with the family. That family house goes from generation to generation. That house is paid off. They have no mortgage. They have no rent. So they can collect and build their wealth. Me, I don't have that. So I still have to keep paying all my regular bills and I'm being taxed at the same tax rate as uh -huh. everyone. How does that make sense? Right. Right. You want to know something? Look, like I said before, look, they look, they they wrote, look, and they wrote the script a long time ago. It goes, listen, this goes further back than Martin Luther King marching in the oh, city. Yeah. Listen, uh -huh. they wrote it a long time ago, 1830. Andrew Jackson wrote the Removal Act. Okay, he removed the Indians off of their damn land. Okay, and said that we're gonna just borrow this. Okay, you can go. We're gonna just borrow this, and it, you know he removed them off the land with a Removal Act. That's where state taxes started coming in at. He took the land from the damn Indians. And then when the Indians came back and said, hey, listen, we made over 370 treaties with y'all. Okay, we want our damn land back. That's how America gets down. They make laws and they break them. They break mm -hmm. them and they, their, they don't even go by their own damn laws. Okay, mm -hmm. 370 treaties were made, okay, with the North American Indians and the United States broke every last single one of them. That's where that term Indian giver came from. Mm. They were the North American Indians 
Indian give us like, you gave us this land, here's the treaty, now you want the land back. You know, we, we, we didn't give them a damn thing. They came over and stole it from us. Literally. Oh, we're gonna give them away. And that damn lie they tell they teach your kids in school. <laughs> I teach, I counter, I counter, I counter teach my kids. I teach yeah, yeah, that lie they teach your kids in school and say that the uh, Arawak Indians sold Manhattan for fourteen dollars and some damn beads. <laughs> Look, before I forget, let's touch on these reparations real quick. I'm going to show the screen about the, the Japanese mm. Americans, and I'm going to turn this banner off so you guys can really see the That's image good. of this. Now, each surviving Japanese American after World War II was given up to about $20,000. Wow. Overall, they paid back all the surviving Japanese people that were involved with, with the, um, the, the backlash or the results. You know, some people got burned up, you know, whatever the situation was. They, some of them were in camps, concentration camps and things like that. They pay out to that particular Japanese community $1.6 billion in reparations. Wow. So each person equivalently got about $20,000. Now, to most people, that may not sound like a lot, but my point that I'm making here today is that they got paid something. Right. And, you know, $20,000 for African-Americans is just not enough. But I'll say if they want to start there, that's something. They can get some of us on track because to go piggyback on what Asia said earlier, her her six figures is not going to work the same. It's not going to hit the same as someone with six figures plus generational wealth. That's the plus factor. A lot of us don't have that plus factor. A lot of us are starting that generational wealth today, you know, because our parents didn't know how to do it. And our grandparents and great grandparents had no clue. They were too far behind, like Frank said earlier. So I think that, you know, moving forward in society, when we interact with each other from different cultures, from different backgrounds, you need to be mindful of that, that you know, we might be at the same job getting paid the same, but my money's going to hit totally different. Because now I have a family. I don't have a generational wealth. Like, well, like Asia said, I'm getting taxed out the butt. You know, I got insurance. I got car insurance. I got up your payments. You know, I got mortgage. But your money is sitting up nicely in the bank somewhere. Or your money is sitting in a CD. Or your money, you know, you're getting some money coming from an annuity. You know, things like that, that a lot of black people don't even know what I'm talking about right now. And it's so much information for people to try to catch up too. You know, people got to think about that. I hear so many people who say, oh, well, you know, you just, just look it up. Yeah, okay, you can do that. But think about where do you start? It's so mm -hmm. much information to right. know right. if this hasn't been passed down for the last three generations and you're starting it, you got a lot of work to do. Right, right, absolutely. Let me read something off to y'all. Okay, just a couple things. I know a lot of times people say, oh my goodness, you know, they're living off of our slave labor. And you know, just not how, well, how the hell can you prove it? Aetna, okay, life insurance company. Uh oh, okay. no. They look familiar to you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Look familiar to you, Danny and um, Asia? Yeah. All right, let me read something to you. Aetna, okay, has long acknowledged for several years, shortly after fun, uh, fondling 1853, that the company has insured the lives of slaves. Okay, of dead slaves. So what they were doing, actually, the company of Aetna, that insurance company, what they were doing, the slave masters was insuring, okay, the slaves through Aetna, the family of Aetna, okay? And so when the slaves died, the company, they get a policy. The company Aetna, they mm -hmm. collected off of the dead black slaves. So when you go to your job, Okay, and then you probably got insurance by Aetna by the look at your face. But anyway, that's that's <laughs> no, I don't. But actually, I'm affiliated <laughs> away. Yeah. I'm around with you. But listen, they <laughs> listen. I'm like, oh, right. <laughs> well, you probably know people that do. Oh, this, yeah. company, this company was founded, okay, off of the deaths of black slaves. Okay, the slave master would go through the company at another insurance company. Uh -huh. Okay, and what they would do, they would pay the family. Okay. Slave, they would pay the family money off of every dead slave. So when you're sitting in the HR office and they come to you with a benefits package, whether you want Blue Cross, Blue Shield, or Aetna, just know that. That wouldn't be a choice for me no more. I tell you that. That's right. why I was looking like that. I was like, man, it's always something. It's just, just know that Aetna was started off of the huh. deaths of your forefathers. That's how they got rich, off of dead slaves, okay? Now, what she was talking about, let me go, it's a couple of New York Life Insurance, the same way. All this is in my book. Okay, Wachovia Bank. That sounds familiar to you? Wells Fargo. Which there is there you go. There wow. you go. I got, look, I got a little story for you about both of them, okay? Uh, Wachovia Bank, which started in 1879, okay, 
They, uh, Wachovia grew to become the largest bank in the Southeast Party. They too, okay, apologized for after disclosing as two of his historical predecessors owned slaves, okay, during the transition of slavery. Wells Fargo as well, they apologized for that. So the founders of Wells Fargo and the founders of Wachovia, okay, they apologized, okay, for having, okay, and owning slaves. Let me say this too, right? Most of the, and, and mark this down and, and remember this, most of the banking headquarters, okay, like Wachovia, Bank of America, like you said, Asia, mm-hmm. Bank of America, Wachovia, BBNT, they're all headquartered in the South. Reason being is because the South had the most heavy populated slaves and they still got that old slave money. Okay, back then it had to put that damn money some damn where. So that's when the banks started headquartering down in the south. And today, those banks still exist to today with that old slave money still in them damn banks. That's why the majority of bank headquarters are in the south where slavery existed. They still got that old slave money in them banks, man. Still got them. If you go to Charlotte. Um, Bank of America is headquartered down in Charlotte. You go in there, hell, you may see some slaves working down in the vault. You never know. But they got that old slave money still there. Mm. It's a shame, man. It's hell just yeah. crazy. Like, when you really know the history, just it, it's mind blowing to be honest. It is. There's so much that you don't know. Yep. Yeah. It's so much, and it is, like I said, Anybody yes can look this up, but you know sometimes you don't even know to look this up. That's right. what I'm saying. Like you don't know what you don't know. Tiffany and Company, that place, uh, ladies always uh, love to get those. Nice uh, uh-huh. Tiffany and Company started as a mill textile company. Okay, that in the back of the mill, slaves handpicked the cotton. Okay, from sun up to sundown, that was the founding of the Tiffany and Company and headquarters. So next time when you see Tiffany. And company just know that it was started off the blood, sweat, and tears. Okay, off your forefathers, Brooks Brothers. Okay, where mm-hmm. black men like to go on Fifth Avenue, Manhattan, and get those really nice suits from. Just know, <laughs> just know that Brooks Brothers not only made okay black, not only the Brooks Brothers make okay suits, high end suits, but it was also founded okay off of black slavery. Mm-hmm. All, of, all of this is in my book. All of this is in my book. And oh, wait, wait, put that back in the in the screen view so people can see that. Whew, we need to get this book, Frank. People, if you're watching, Frank has seven books on Amazon just explaining all the details that he's explaining today. We need to educate ourselves. We need to inform ourselves on the true history of America. The Barclay family in Brooklyn. The Barclay family in Brooklyn that um, that uh, the Jigger Man, okay, uh, he bought into the Barclay family. The Barclay uh-huh. family, their forefathers go back into owning slaves as well. So I'm not too sure if people really know about that, but the Barclay family that owns that big old nice um, stadium, that complex uh-huh. in Brooklyn that the Brooklyn Nets play out of, when you go back into the Barclay family, they own slaves. The next time you walk into the center and you want to watch the Brooklyn Nets, just know it is owned by people that had slaves. Just like a lot of, just like a lot of places. But I'm all about proving. You, I don't, don't come to me with hearsay and and I heard this and I heard that. No, come to me with facts. That's what I love. I love facts. Something that you can that's tangible and you can prove it. Something that's facts. Don't come to me and say something that your grandmother thought. Yeah, you know, <laughs> he had a vision. You know, I don't want to hear that. I, yeah. want, I need facts. Okay? I know that's right. And uh, you Look. know, I think it's. I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I, I think it's important that we teach our children how to research information, because any person can tell them anything, and they can just believe it. Because sometimes children can. Well, not sometimes. Children are naive. They only know what we teach them. But if you teach your children how to research, they can counter uh, review and research and find out information that 
if it's a lie or a truth or the truth. Um, my Not daughter, necessarily now because the algorithms have something. changed. Yeah, the al- yeah. But like, say for example, if they're in school and they're learning about Christopher Columbus discovering America, they can do research and find out. Well, he didn't really discover America, but if you teach them how to get information, you're giving them the tools that they need to decipher what's true and what's not. Right. And then teach them to do deductive reasoning, too, because that's something you just can't be taught. If you teach them how to think, then they can start drawing these conclusions on their own. And that's what I, I know my parents didn't teach me how to do that. I don't even think they thought about that. And that's the problem. We we have to, if not any other race of people in this country, we have to know how to to, to, to tie the lines together and create the real picture. Because if we don't, we'll just.